delighted to be kicking off um, this academic term with the Institute of Food and Health Research Bites. And this morning, the presentation is going to be by Professor Arlene Gibney. So Arlene has been working in the area of human nutrition since 1997. Um, with degrees from University of Ulster, University of Coleraine, Cambridge, um, and also from Trinity College Dublin. And she came to UCD in 2005, and since then really has taken a leadership role in the development of both nutrition teaching and the, the research area, and has led a, a number of both national grants and uh, European grants as a principal investigator. Her research has been largely defined by the area of personalised nutrition. And this morning, that's what she's going to talk to us about, and specifically about the dietary intake assessment and the associated data and technology um, and its relevance in personalised nutrition. So over to you, Eileen, and thank Thanks you for joining us this morning. Not at all. Uh, nice to kick off the academic year doing this. So I am... Um, what I've tried to do is summarise, I suppose, the scope of work I'm doing, which when you see the scope of work will be quite broad. And then I'm focusing on a couple of my research uh, projects as opposed to all of them. Um, and I can come back in a year's time and maybe update you with a, with a bit on the others. So uh, would ask to kind of look at our research challenge. And this is the one for the Institute of Food and Health for Nutrition. And it's to advance a nutrition research to enable people to live healthy lives and promote well-being. Um, and that's from molecular to public health. And I think a lot of my work does try to span this as much as we can, that I like to understand the mechanisms and then apply those within recommendations. And when I look at my own work, uh, really the research scope that I have is now at the moment my pathway has sort of moved into developing dietary intake assessment and then working with the associated data and the technologies that are with that for use in personalized nutrition messages moving forward and whether they're uh, personalized based on different food groups different nutrients or maybe um, other aspects of food choice like sustainability and things like that that that's the scope that we i want to sort of move towards my specific objectives are developing dietary intake technologies um, and developing those capabilities, looking at no novel methods to both assess and analyze dietary intakes, um, and trying to work uh, with large, um, I suppose, cloud-based data analysis strategies so that we can maximize the data that is collected. Um, development of personalized nutrition feedback messages and using those data to be able to effectively uh, give feedback to individuals. And then I really also have sort of another arm where I do a lot of intervention studies um, looking at the uh, metabolism of different foods or different bioactives and the impact on health. And why those two sound very different, they feed into each other because I really have to understand the metabolism and the inter-individual variability in those studies to be able to then identify the factors that influence response, which can then be put into these kind of feedback messages for personalized nutrition. So I have a lot of ongoing projects at the moment. So I feel a lot of the time I'm juggling many different things. Um, and these are uh, the ones that I have ongoing at the moment or are coming to a completion. So I work um, a lot in Food for Health Ireland and I'll talk about one of those um, research uh, things at the end. I have a new European project that's not new now, it's a year old on Food Nutrition Security Cloud, which I'll talk a lot about. I'm working with the Science Foundation Ireland um, Insight uh, program, um, again linked uh, alongside to FNS uh, Cloud, that dietary data side. And then I have some other uh, projects uh, such as the Marigo Career Fit with Alexandra Conic Rustic, and we're looking at seaweed functionality within that. Within that. I have a PhD student within the Food Safety Authority of Ireland looking at food reformulation. I have ongoing work looking at development of Foodbook 24, which is the, the tool that we use for dietary intake data collection. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And then I have just beginning to complete or at the final stages of a, looking at dietary intake in seafood consumers. 
Um, and I also did work over the last couple of years with Claire Corish um, and Laura Barton on malnutrition in elderly. And we're still publishing some of the work on that. So as you can see, it's quite broad from um, a lot sort of very technological based, very data driven, but then also intervention studies um, and then moving into the sort of uh, public health side of things with the work within the FSAI and, and JPI, etc. So the ongoing projects I have, I split them into what I call digital and human. And the ones highlighted in red are the ones I'm going to try and focus on and give you a little snapshot of what we're doing in those um, uh, today. So food, uh, food Nutrition Security Cloud or FNS Cloud um, is a Horizon 2020 uh, project uh, that will be completed in 2023. And really what it wants to do is to develop a, a food cloud that federates existing and emerging data sets um, across the, the food, nutrition and security sphere. So it wants to overcome, um, I suppose, the fragmentation of existing data um, to try um, and integrate existing data sets to provide uh, data, tools and services uh, that will uh, maximize the use of that data to uh, uh, address knowledge gaps and exploit those research resources um, a little bit more. And they really span from uh, very much the, the, the farm right through to consumer data. So trying to develop a framework that can capture all of the data associated with that and, and then support systems to help automate or semi-automate analysis and data sharing and data merging within those. So the objectives, I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, a lot of the work that I am working on is the uh, use cases, and I'll describe what we're doing within those, to test this principle um, that we can generate data, share data, merge data, and do automated analysis on that data to support specific research questions. So a lot of work is ongoing about harmonizing and standardizing um, data that comes out from nutrition research. Why is that important? Well, if I have a data set from Germany and I have a data set from Ireland, do I code my uh, data sets the same? If I don't code them the same, can I map across different coding strategies? Am I using the same units? Am I describing the same thing? So I'm, I have a very steep learning curve in this project by learning about metadata interoperability. And as a scientist, I'm engaging very much so with the, uh, I suppose the data scientists to really try and get uh, uh, some sort of mapping strategy so that we can maximize um, those. So where do we sit within this? And this is from Paul Finglas, and this is really much about the conceptual framework of the food systems. And FNS Cloud, sorry, um, is really taking data from food supply chains, from the food environment, from consumer behavior, from diets, and then linking all of that to sort of nutrition and health outcomes. And our big challenge is trying to take that large remit of data from very much production level right through to the, say, for example, the microbiome and, and make sure that we have a pathway where data can, can be, um, I suppose, supported from all of those differing aspects within that. Um, the work package that we're leading, and Laura Barden is the postdoc working with me on this at the moment, is work package four. Um, and it's so di divided into use cases, which I have put the titles up here at the moment. So we're looking at everything from food traceability and metrology search engine. This is focusing on three specific foods. It's focusing on milk, olive oil and uh, fish. They haven't decided on, on the species of that yet. So trying to understand how they are produced. Um, the factors influencing some of the uh, properties of these foods as they are being produced, how they are then processed, um, delivered and consumed by the consumer. So trying to, to look at existing data um, that can uh, feed into this and allow us to sort of search from that, that, that fork, uh, farm to the fork side of it. Um, uh, leaders in um, Nutris are looking at food labelling. So trying to uh, develop technologies that could capture, um, automatically, automatically capture food labeling um, and look at differences in food labeling and ingredients across um, specific product categories across Europe. And these are categories that are usually targeted for reformulation. So these are focusing on soft drinks at the moment, uh, sugary confection, um, yogurts and other 
products like that. Um, RIVM are leading the, the uh, work packet or the task on, on risk assessment and uh, trying to, I suppose, look at data sets across Europe and sort of see can we merge some of those with risk assessment, which whilst it should be simple, again, this coding issue and this interoperability is, is an issue that is we will overcome within this project. And then also developing a consumer-based um, approach to sharing this knowledge as well. We're very much focusing on 4.4, which is food aid can take and consumer studies and undertaking field labs within those. And then QIB are looking at the uh, microbiome. So what you really sort of see here is the breadth of data that will be collected across these use cases. And then it's our job to try and address how that data can be um, uh, shared, utilized and uh, um, uh, I suppose delved into a little bit further. One that where there are four field labs as they're outlined here and we're going to look at field lab one where we're going to look at dietary intake in diverse ethnic groups and um, field lab two will look at dietary intake and some uh, biomarkers in elderly. We have a meal planning um, app being developed within uh, Tomapo um, in Slovenia and then Quadrum Institute are looking at the, the, the microbiome. So what uh, are we going to do with these? Well, within the use cases, uh, UCD are, are over sort of seeing, I suppose, the collection of that data within our partners um, and uh, looking at uh, the, the, I suppose, the metadata associated with it, the coding of those data sets, so that we can then lead into what we're calling the demonstrators within those. So we can then take this data and then use data across the domains to try and answer some larger research questions, um, such as the impact of uh, a particular food group on Mark's metabolic health, for example, if we have that kind of data. Um, and to generate then some tools that will support individuals in conducting such analysis on the data that will be available within FNS Cloud. So that is the data that is collected within the cloud, but then also data that can be uploaded to this cloud or accessed through this cloud, um, so long as it is mapped and available and matches the, the, the system that we are setting up within this. So it's a large project with about 32 partners and it's just all about data. So for example, the one that we will be using and focusing in a lot is looking at the dietary intake data across the field labs that are listed there. Um, and then combining that potentially with existing data sets and developing strategies to look at, uh, you know, maybe contribution of specific food groups to nutrients or looking at some meal pattern analysis across different cohorts across Europe. Um, so developing, I suppose, support systems for that analysis. So at the moment, we're in the stages of uh, collecting a lot of that data. We are looking at the data sets that exist and doing work on standardization, on coding, on, on the interoperability. And then when the data collection is finished, we'll then move into being able to, to uh, develop tools that will support that analysis. So one of the reasons I became very involved in this and one of the reasons that I'm interested is that I like to develop technologies for dietary intake assessment and I'm going to touch on two briefly here. One that has uh, been in existence for quite a while um, and that is Foodbook 24 which is an online 24-hour recall tool. It's a self-administered tool so that means that the participants use it themselves. Um, it has automated analysis so it allows the um, I suppose immediate analysis of data rather than the pen and paper routes, which often need additional input from researchers to put that into an additional tool. So it's trying to automate that process a little bit. It's based on the Irish food consumption data, and it was a project that was in collaboration with the University College Cork, with uh, Albert Flynn and Jeanette Walton, and then um, Breege uh, uh, supported <laughs> some of this as well, um, and Claire Tyman, who now works in DCU. Um, it's a blended method. We use what we call a multiple pass method where individuals uh, lay down their food and I can show you aspects of that. Um, but we also have um, questionnaires that can be built into it like consent forms can be built into this and some demographic questionnaires etc. 
So I'm hoping that this might work while I, I talk over this. So this is essentially a, a, a simulation of what, what happens for the individual. We use a multiple pass method where we ask the individuals to list the meals that they have consumed the previous day. Um, they have a drop down selection of the type of meals that they consumed and the times at which they consume them. We ask questions about where those foods are consumed. Once that is done, the consumer then, or the participant searches for the foods that they wish to add within those. Um, they add foods and as they add them, specific questions come up that can prompt, did you add butter to this? Because they're what we call uh, prompt questions or commonly associated foods. And this is what a typical dietitian may do as they're doing that. Once we have this done, um, we then move on to be able to answer uh, aspects about portion sizes and then other specific uh, details of this. So I'm not going to spend too much time doing that, but anyone who wants to see this in use, I'm happy to, to, to touch base with them and to show them. And essentially we can um, share this for use in, in any, uh, anyone's uh, research things. So it's gone back to the beginning again. So I'm just trying to see how I can move this on. Okay, so how have we used this to date? Well, we've done validation and comparison studies with that. We've demonstrated that it is very comparable to 24-hour recalls. We have uh, compared it to more traditional food diaries and we've shown good agreement within those. And we have done biomarker analysis, which has shown that it is as good as previous, uh, more traditional um, types of analysis out there. I mean, dietary intake data assessment uh, technologies and, and methods are inherently flawed. Um, we're reliant on people to tell the truth, to know what they need to answer and to put input in this. But these online systems are really growing um, in their uh, use in national surveys. And then also, I think, in, you know, the last six months has highlighted that we need to be able to be flexible in the way that we approach these. So we have demonstrated that it can be used and we are using it ongoing in a lot of different research projects. And it's this data set that will then also be, and this tool that will be used in FNS Cloud. And within FNS Cloud, we are developing this for multi use in multiple different population groups. We're expanding our food list to match those. We are adding additional languages, so it's currently available in English. We're building this for use in Cantonese. We will have it in Polish, Portuguese, and other languages um, that need to be supported in, the, in I suppose, in the FNS uh, cloud system. We are embedding questionnaire functions um, into this so that we can increase the ability to add specific questionnaires for a study. So for those of you that do dietary intake assessment, we often also want to ask a little bit about demographics. We might want to ask about food choice. So we're increasing that ability that this becomes a tool that can also collect additional um, information as well as the dietary information into one place so that that then is available as an output. And then we will have, um, sorry, that should be automated or semi-automated dietary feedback, personalized feedback at a food group level. So that when we complete this analysis, we will be able to automatically give the individuals uh, feedback. This is very much a research focused tool. So for use in, in research projects um, and things like that. And as I said, it will be embedded in the FNS Cloud uh, project moving forward. I also do a lot of work more recently in the last year with FNS, uh, sorry, with Insight 2. Um, Insight is the SFI Centre for Data Analytics. And you probably think, well, uh, why am I there? Well, I'm there because the, everyone who has worked with dietary into data knows that it's, it's big data. There's a lot of data. It's very complex. We talk about foods. We talk about food groups. And when we talk about intakes, we have intakes at a, a nutrient level, at a food group level. We can do dietary patterns. So it fits really nicely into the challenges that Insight are trying to address, trying to develop strategies for complex data analysis. Um, and they have several different strategies where we feed into in terms of the augmented human. So where I'm focusing on at the moment is looking at meal-based dietary analysis. So for those of you that don't know much about dietary intake assessment, when we measure someone's diet, someone might record a burger and chips. The chip picture will come up in a second. When we look at the burger, we then code every single individual aspect of that. So we have a bun, a tomato, a lettuce, cheese, the patty itself, and this becomes a meal. OK, well, what I would suggest is that, you know, the meal is listed here. These are the codes associated with it. Now, if someone doesn't like tomatoes, 
then that is a still essentially the same meal, but the coding is different. And therefore, at a, a, a I suppose, a database, data level, those two are quite different foods. But from, I suppose, a, you know, a perception level, they're identical. And then individuals may or may not include chips with those. And then the portions of each of those also influence that. Mm -hmm. So rather than assess foods at an individual level, what I'm trying to do is to look at dietary intake at a very much at a meal based level. And we started some work within the Food For Me project that I was involved with quite some time ago. Um, and I published this uh, paper along with Lorraine Brennan and Clara Woolhead, who is a PhD student who led this work, um, looking at um, generic meals. So rather than asking everybody to list each food individually, could we look at the concept of looking at commonly consumed breakfast, lunches and dinners? And if we could do so, could we use that information to really um, accurately capture someone's dietary intake? And if we can do that, is this a novel method for Metch, uh, to, to look at dietary intake assessment? So when we looked at the meals within the National Adult Nutrition Survey um, in this paper that we published some time ago, you can see there that at breakfast, we they were about 5,500 588 breakfasts listed, again, light meals, snacks, etc. But when we did the analysis, we could reduce these to 14 generic breakfasts that accurately described, you know, about 80% of the consumption of breakfast within those. So what we're saying here is that whilst there's considerable variation, if we aggregate some of those foods and not allow so much variation, we can begin to look at what are kind of generic or common breakfasts, common lunches and common dinners. And we can begin to use that data uh, to accurately assess someone's diet. So why am I furthering this work in UCD or in, in Insight and what am I interested in? Well, I want to move this a little bit further to look at meal image classification. And the current methods, I think this is an easy way to kind of demonstrate how the current methods of image capturing in, in meal based um, or image based intake assessment tools, they take the Im image of a meal and they usually have what's called a marker, a fiducial marker beside it, which um, is a marker that uh, uh, corrects for color and size. So it allows them to estimate volume and identify the foods. And traditionally at the moment, each of the foods are traditionally separated out and they uh, try to um, capture that that is a potato with a piece of fish, with some salad, etc. And they have to identify each individual one. When they do so, they then have to uh, try and I get like a, a capture the volume of each one of those. And then using the volume or the weight, the amount of it and the individual identified foods, they can then uh, estimate the, the nutrient composition of the meal presented to them. Now, what I would like to do, what I'm working with Insight is that actually we really look at this at a meal based level, that we don't break this image up into uh, the individual foods, that we try to match this image from a meal to the generic images or the generic meals that we have uh, developed in the, the meal classification strategy. And if we can do that, um, then it allows us to more potentially more accurately assess because there's a lot of error associated with trying to uh, guess each of the individual foods. And if we can do that, okay, um, using uh, both the meal image, the associated metadata, so what is the time, what is the location, because all of that information can help us to automatically analyze that data um, and that image a little bit more succinctly and give us a little bit more information to more accurately access that. We present images, et cetera, with the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we can map the image that the user has with that. If we can do so, then we can generate automated uh, meal-based personalized recommendations, um, and we can send push notifications um, when individuals are at a particular location or at a particular time of the day associated with those meal-based intakes. So it's trying to really close that loop a little bit more and to push the approach um, for um, dietary intake assessment uh, image capture a little bit differently. So address it 
from more of the, the male based level. So what's the ongoing work within that? Well, we have done some preliminary work that would have looked at presenting images for individuals and sort of saying, here's a common breakfast. Which one of these did you assess? But then to also do a recall with the individual. And we can see reasonable comparisons within that, but it's not perfect. OK, and um, particularly when you get down to some micronutrient levels, it's, it's, it is quite well off. So we need to go and understand, well, what are we not capturing here? Is it something to do with portion sizes? Are there foods that we should be including within that? So I have a PhD student call, which is working and funded from Insight to, to further develop this meal classification and to increase this accuracy of potentially using the meal based assessments. So what are we doing? We're redefining our, our food groups to align them to um, the food based recommendations, say from the from the FSAI and we're using a nutrient index. So a combination of those that will align them much more to the recommendations. Um, and we're also uh, partnering, we're very excited to partner with the PREDICT study, um, which has a, a study of about a thousand participants um, who captured meal images and meal diaries over 14 days. So we'll be using their data sets to develop what we're calling a training data set. So once we have developed a, uh, an accurate uh, meal-based classification pattern or uh, algorithm or an ability to do that, we'll then apply it to this data set and then we have matched images for that which can be used within the Insight um, uh, uh, team to then use this as a, a training um, data set to match the um, image algorithm images to the, the things so we can develop algorithms for that. So that really is a leap forward and we're just starting that work um, with PREDICT in, in the coming months. I know I'm flashing through everything and I want to keep to time, but I just want to touch briefly on Food for Health Ireland. So um, this is the other side of the coin where I'm doing some very much some human work. Um, I work with Emma Feeney, Dolores and Mick on um, the Healthy Cheese um, study. And this is work that has built from FHI2 right up to um, uh, FHI3 now. And we are looking very much at um, the impact of cheese on markets of metabolic health. Um, I'm going to skip through these to, to show you what we're doing now. What we did find when we looked at cheese is that we saw that consumption of cheese reduced um, LDL cholesterol when consumed within the cheese as opposed to outside the cheese. So we're looking at um, intake of, of dairy fat. So it was much better for you when it was within the cheese as compared to outside. But what we're doing now is really beginning to challenge that in terms of that matrix within the cheese, that if we modify the matrix, and one of the ways in which we do consume cheese a lot is melted. So if we melt that cheese, do we still see that same beneficial effect of consumption of the dairy fat within cheese. But what is exciting about FHI3 is that we're also combining this with very detailed mechanistic studies by um, Dermot Sheehan in Chagas and by Dolores Arirden and Mick um, uh, here in, in UCD to then um, look at uh, the human side within the human intervention study, but also the lab-based side, which will look at the physiochemical properties of that. Um, and uh, if we can match and understand that if there is a difference when it's melted versus unmelted, well, what's happening within the food and can we determine what's causing that so that we can feed it more into those. So what are we doing? Uh, myself and Emma are leading a, a, a parallel intervention study looking at essentially solid cheese, melted cheese, and then what we call deconstructed cheese, the different components of cheese outside of that. Um, we are running a study which will um, look at uh, anthropometry, we'll take blood samples, we'll measure diet, um, and we'll also collect uh, faecal samples within that. So why am I highlighting this? I'm highlighting it for two reasons. We're recruiting. Um, during the COVID, we had to really re uh, write our SOPs. We had to double down and look at what we could or couldn't do. So we have now redeveloped everything. We have got ethics and we have actually started our study and we had six participants, five participants in on Saturday who are back in on this study under this new study design and the COVID uh, principles. What we are doing is recruiting. We're recruiting through um, the UCD Food and Health Facebook page. 
Um, and we already had about 60 individuals over the last week um, approach us through that. So I'm highlighting this because we are recruiting. So if you know anyone who likes cheese, please share um, the information. Please like the Facebook page. And for those of you who are doing additional studies, this is a way in which we are going to be able to reach out to participants in the future. Um, so myself, um, Emma, Geraldine, Dolores will be able to, to sort of support you in that. So I thought it was a nice thing to highlight um, as a capability that we have for that. And we've done well over the last few days out of it. Whether they'll translate into people coming to eat cheese for six weeks, I don't know. Okay, um, so I just want to say thank you to the research team and all my collaborators, um, Food for Health Ireland, Insight, Food Security Cloud and the FSAI. Uh, I couldn't cover everything there, so you'll see um, there's a lot of my team um, who are listed there and um, I can talk about some of those other projects another time. Thanks so much Charlene, that's, that's great, super overview of all your activities and I think it's, it's really highlighting the digital transformation that's occurring in the area and certainly it's come a long way since I was a, had modules in undergraduate nutrition where you're giving a weighing scale as a piece of paper and a pencil and you had to battle to get in the council with us and book in the library, there'd only be one for all of us and you calculated with your calculator, so it's fantastic to, to see the progression and development. And, and just a quick question for me, in terms of the work with Insight yeah. um, and the capturing of the meal images, what kind of time frame would you anticipate before this becomes a reality? And um, I would say the meal, the fact that we now have access to the PREDICT study, so having a large training data set that has very detailed image uh, images, but also very detailed dietary intake um, uh, data alongside of it, that we can apply that to, that's been the biggest stumbling block. So we initially had wanted, we were gonna build in about 12 months for data collection for that. But now that we have that, I could see us working with the computer scientists, the, the image recognition team. It's actually with Alan Smeaton in DCU um, to try and push that and, and within the next 12 to 18 months. So it's, mm. there's a lot of work in that area and it's, most of it's led by a lady called Carol Bushi who's out in Hawaii. I keep saying I'd love a spatula out there. <laughs> so we'll wait for the COVID finish. Um, but she, they do the segmented analysis and she's very keen to work with us to try and approach it from the meal level if we can work with her with that as well. So I think we can make leaps forward and it's through these collaborations that we can make the biggest leaps forward. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It won't be next year. It'll be next year at least before we have a concept. But I think we can move a lot quicker now that we have these. Super. Yeah. Okay, do people have questions for Eileen? No? Quiet. Well, quiet. Yeah, time to get on to the, the, the next task of the day. Yeah, to day. I suppose what I want to say is that I like you know mm. that food book 24 is available for people if people are measuring dietary intake in their surveys and want to use it you know those tools are available and uh, there's lots of them around you know so um to shout if you want any advice on any any of the ones either that one or any of the other ones people want to use super that's great Eileen so thanks to Eileen for preparing such a succinct and, and, and yet uh, gives a very good uh, flavour as to the breadth of research uh, she's doing and certainly the transformational changes that are recurring in personalised nutrition and thanks to all of you for joining us so this is the first of the academic uh, year um, so we will have them regularly, so um, Joe will give you a best as to when they're going to happen. I think we're going to keep to the schedule of a Monday at this time. Um, and certainly until we're out of this uh, COVID period, we will all be on Zoom. So thanks for, for joining us. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of the, the day and um, connect into us for the, the next research bite. Okay, take care, Thank everybody. Okay, bye-bye.